For our project, we wanted to conduct a rapid survey to assess the species diversity at the Watsonville Culture Park. The Watsonville Culture Park is owned by Rainforest to Bush and is important to the Mbabra people because they have native title over the land. We were interested in looking into the species diversity of the area to see what species the Watsonville Culture Park is home to. Our surveys aim to find a wide range of fauna, including birds, mammals, moths, butterflies, dung beetles, and other insects, as well as collecting data on the culturally significant flora. Information we gather will be used in an info board for the Rainforest to Bush campgrounds, which will provide guests with information about the traditional landowners and significant species. So the Tablelands has six traditional uh, Aboriginal language groups. Two are Yadinji and Mbabaram. So west of Herberton at Watsonville, that has been the traditional um, lands of the Mbabaram people for tens of thousands of years. But due to European colonisation, um, which denied their customs and traditions, led to forced relocation and the removal of children from their families and it suppressed cultural practices. And this caused the loss of language, uh, family connections and traditional knowledge um, for all Australian Aboriginal people. Um, so this loss of traditional knowledge has led to generations of Mbabaran people that now have very little connection to their traditional land. So this project aims to gather information about the flora and fauna at the Watsonville Culture Park so that when Mbabaran people come to the land here, they come back onto country and they come to visit, they can learn about the diversity of plant and animal species here as a first step to relearning their traditional ecological knowledge. Uh, so Rainforest to Bush, um, as a family business, business is very new to our family and it's the, the first business in, um, that we've had in our family forever. Um, so it's very exciting for our family members to be part of something about a part of a legacy, you know, building something from the beginning that's going to be hopefully here for generations and generations. So it's, um, it's a way that we can start to build wealth in our family and start to build a purpose and you know, give our young kids something to do when they leave school. To collect data on the species at the Watsonville Culture Park, our group camped at the site for four days. There, we set up four 100-meter transects. On each transect, we placed a trail camera to capture mammal movement and laid six evenly spaced dung beetle pitfall traps. Each trap alternated between bait types consisting of mushrooms, dung, or carrion. We also used the transects to collect leaf litter and vertebrates. Each night, we went spotlighting for animals along the transects and light sheeted for moths and other invertebrates at the main campsite. We conducted bird surveys each morning, recording observations at the start and end points of each transect, as well as beneath the nearby section of power lines. Each day, we completed butterfly sweep netting and general observation surveys around the campsite and along the transects. Once we returned to the school for field studies, we identified and pinned our dung beetles, moths, butterflies, and other invertebrate specimens for a reference collection of the area. Upon compiling our results into a species list, we found 477 unique taxa at the Watsonville Culture Park. Of these 477 individuals, we were able to identify 247 of them to species. There were 310 unique invertebrates, which included 135 moths and butterflies, with one example being the jewel grass blue, the smallest butterfly in Australia. We also observed 49 unique vertebrates, which included eight mammals. Some mammals found include the agile wallaby, the common bush tail possum, and the common ringtail possum. Additionally, there were 32 unique birds, with two examples being the tawny frogmouth and the sofa crested cockatoo. With the completed species list, we worked closely with a group of SFS students who spoke with Mbabram elders to find the most important species culturally to include on the bio board. Some significant species we want to include are the tawny frogmouth, laughing kookaburra, and agile wallaby. While designing our board, we've been working closely with Alan Anderson and Uncle Ross to include design choices that reflect Mbabram culture and rainforest bush. The board will be three double-sided panels in the shapes of Mbabram shields. Other elements we would like to include are the colors of Rainforest to Bush, the traditional colors of Mbabram people, and references to Mbabram dot art. So I think having an information board, um, you know, here in the park, we not only use this park for tour activities, um, but you know, also for research, and also um, as a safe place to practice our culture and teach our culture. So it's not only a board that we can show to tourists that are on tours, um, but it's also a place where we can, you know, hold cultural training programs and teach, teach to our young kids 
um, you know, having that interactive board where you can actually look at pictures um, and, you know, it's while you're explaining things, it just makes it a bit easier learning. So, yeah. Even though we did a rapid survey of the area, we were able to compile a list that shows a rough estimate of the species diversity. For any future research, we recommend surveying for a longer period and across different seasons for more accurate data.